From the studios of the Ram Cave and the home of the Camellias, I'm Joe Tarosian, and this is the Burbank Faith Virtual Good Morning for June the 19th, 2023. As always, we are praying for our young people. Today we're going to be in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 17 through 19. That's 1 Peter chapter 1, 17 through 19. 1 Peter is before 2 Peter, and it's right after James. Okay, this is episode number 85 of a ministry without parole. And meaning that we are out here almost every day uh, praying and wanting the best for our young people. I apologize for not being here on Friday, but uh, it was my anniversary weekend. Uh, again, I am working on what we're seeing happen on this. It does not happen when I'm on YouTube and and doing it from there. So I don't know it's from my end. It's something to do with my Facebook connection is that I start off straight and then about two seconds in, my face scrunches up. As long as the audio is okay, I guess that's cool. Uh, but just uh, let you know, I'm aware of it, trying to work on it. I don't like it. It makes me look like I have no neck and, you know, I want to look good at something, you know. And so uh, so we are working on it and I apologize. Uh, I don't know, aesthetically, it just doesn't look good. Anyway, we are in... Uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, 17 through 19. This is the Apostle Peter who wrote this, and it's to the general church. Uh, it's a great passage, an overlooked passage. And uh, and again, we're not doing Bible study. We're just doing application here just to get your day started so we can pray and get going. All right. Verse 17 of chapter 1, 1 Peter. Since you call on a father who judges each man's work impartially, live your lives as strangers here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. Uh, that, that, that's, that's the line that I really love there, um, is that you weren't saved or redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or or defect, a sinless character, a sinless individual. Um, he's the one, it's his blood that redeems us. Uh, getting to this here, it's God, of course, is impartial. And uh, one of the things that people have a tough time dealing with today is that the knowledge that God will judge. Yes, he who loves is also he who forgives, but he who forgives is also he who judges. And um, he will not absolve by love that which you willfully pursue. He will judge it. Even though he loves you, he will judge you and hold you accountable for your actions. Uh, but look at the back half of verse 17. We see where God is impartial and he judges fairly, right? But then it says, live your lives as strangers here. Live your lives as strangers here. Meaning this earth is not our final stop. This is not the ultimate. We'll call this the penultimate, right? The, the, the second most important thing uh, in, in our journey. Uh, our, our life after this place is what's important, and there is life after our place. So this isn't our final stop. This life is not the ultimate. Our future is with the Lord. We are his children, created in his image, and we belong to him. You know, the worst thing that I'm, I'm noticing today in these days is the worst thing you see is to see a young person uh, without hope. And at least in my life, from being a child who was born in the mid 60s, so I hit five. And I remember all the hippie movement and all that stuff. I've been clear on it all, but I remember that period. And then the early 70s and everything going forward. But what, I, what, what really sticks with me through all of that was pessimism. Pessimism, uh, you know, in, in every aspect. Uh, and the church joined that pessimism, right? With the Jesus movement in terms of the Jesus movement was good, but it kind of hijacked by the Hal Lindsey movement that it was the end of the world. Uh, Armageddon was just around the corner. The next president elected is going to be the Antichrist. Uh, and this has been with us all of our lives in the church. Um, you know, taking only a back seat to the so-called science of Paul Ehrlichman and the population bomb and, and global cooling, global warming, global climate change and every form uh, uh, and from every corner, every form of uh, progressive uh, action, creating new villains and victims uh, by the week to keep everyone, especially young people, in a perpetual state of despair. And 
We've grown up with this. It just goes on and on and on. It's always the end of the world. It's always the worst of times. It's always, this is the worst it's been since the Great Depression. This is the worst it's been. But what we fail to remember, it's by the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect, that we were redeemed. You know, you can live in that pessimism. And uh, you can live in that, oh man, the Antichrist is coming. You can live in, oh man, you know, there's a forest fire in Canada, so that's definitely global warming, so don't drive your car. You can live in that world if you want. You can live in that. You can live without hope. It's your choice. I, we, those with the believing loyalty in Jesus Christ, we're redeemed not uh, by perishable things, but by an imperishable Christ. Do you get me? That what redeems us is not perishable. It's imperishable. I'm going to be 59 in less than two months. I know. It seems impossible with this face, right? My hair has gone not just gray, not just white, but almost this silvery white where people ask me if I treat my hair to get it to look that coat. My knees sound like a bowl of Rice Krispies when I get up in the morning. Snap, crackle, pop, okay? There's so much scar tissue on my right shoulder, I can barely throw a football these days. Um, you know, And I've lived long enough to discern all the madness around me, all the fraudulence, the, the image of the greatest country on earth destroyed by corrupt politicians and political parties. We, we see it, right? All of that stuff uh, should lead you to despair. <clears throat> but I, you, me, we, we're redeemed by what is imperishable, right? Yeah, the country is perishable, right? Our bodies are perishable, right? But but we were redeemed by the one who is imperishable. And so I remain incredibly positive, incredibly hopeful. And I know I'm not the only one. You know, we weren't saved by the wisdom handed down by those who came before us. <clears throat> but we were saved by the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. I, we, you, me, we've already won. And our mission our call is to declare this victory to those who need that victory, our young people, because they don't see any hope. And I was young once, and we were taught, the way we were taught, the way things were pushed on us, there was no hope. The students I pastored in the 90s in their schools, there is no hope. Uh, but we were redeemed by the blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect, and he is imperishable, right? He is imperishable. This is what we want our young people to have, along with grit, in the, is the hope in knowing that their future is not tied to the world, but to Christ, and that they do not have to conform to the sensibilities and the patterns and the hopelessness of this world that when they come face to face with the spiritual hostility to this world, they know deep down in their soul that they have something better, that who they belong to and who they have been set apart for and who they trust in is imperishable. And knowing that, that they will, they, knowing that they standing alone with Jesus will always be victorious. And that's why we pray for our young people. This is what we want them to have. Amen. Amen. All right. Just a reminder again, Granite Ridge, our summer camp uh, season begins in about, well, begins this next Monday with CIT Academy. We are taking about a dozen or so young people and training them up to be counselors in training. And it's one of our best things. And we're probably the only camp that does it. Um, they go through a screening process, these students. They fill out applications. And it's camp. It's not really camp. It is an academy. And so be in prayer for that. And what we're asking prayer for that, but we're asking for specific prayer for July 17th through the 21st is our kids camp. And uh, I just dropped in the box there, the comment box. It's a link that you can push. And uh, and that will take you to a sign up board. And all you got to do is enter your name. No one's going to ask for information. No one's going to ask you to give a credit card or anything like that. We have 360 spots. That's four slots for every hour that we're at camp. We're at camp for 90 hours, Monday through Friday morning at 10 a.m. And what we're asking for is we're asking for prayer, all the prayer slots to be covered. Every minute of every hour of camp since 2018 for kids camp 
has been covered in prayer and uh, we don't want to break precedent because we view at Granite Ridge with outsiders, which I'm the director of, we view that um, covering this camp in prayer is just as important as finding the right speaker, the right worship leader, uh, just as important as any of those things. And so uh, we're asking you to play a part. Okay. Uh, also, I want to mention that if you're thinking about ministry and you're an adult thinking that, hey, I'd like to go into the ministry. I feel like God's got something for me. Uh, and uh, you feel like you're too old and you can't go to Point Loma or Nazarene Bible College or something like that. Well, I've I got a deal for you. Uh, if you're just looking to maybe get into ministry or just to look know a little bit more, maybe you're a Sunday school teacher. Reverend, Reverend Eloisa Rudin, she's our pastor at uh, Santa Monica Spanish. She runs the Los Angeles District Training Center. And at the Los Angeles District Training Center, you can get this training uh, to maybe theological training to be a better Sunday school teacher or maybe, maybe to get ready for a career change, a life change, and go into full-time ministry. Uh, if you are interested in seeing what the Los Angeles District Training Center ha has to offer online, um, get in contact with me. For some reason, I can't on this website post uh, Eloisa's email, uh, but contact me and I'll get you in touch with Eloisa and uh, you'll get started on this journey. Kelly McCoy, good morning. Thank you so much for clicking on. And everybody who's clicked on, uh, I can't, I got on <coughs> a little bit late today. Uh, also a reminder, June is still, June is Discernment Awareness Month. It's a call to pray, test, and recognize that all we see in the culture, media, entertainment, and politics may not be to our benefit or to the benefit of our children or our children's children. So we keep our eyes wide open, right? And I think we are. We're noticing stuff in our world today. Uh, interesting. Interesting that today is Juneteenth and it's right in the middle of Pride Month. And I noticed there's a little, a little pivoting from Pride to Juneteenth. And, and just interesting. Have your eyes open. June is Discernment Awareness Month. Um, Information-wise, uh, I want to remind you that uh, for those that knew him, good friend of ours, youth pastor back in the 90s with him jim hickman was killed two weeks ago by a drunk driver he was hit by a drunk driver and his wife was seriously injured uh this monday at 10 30 a.m they are having uh, a service for him up in lancaster be in prayer for his wife rhonda and his daughter miranda as uh we can only guess what they're going through right now that the lord can provide peace for them all right as always we are praying for our young people continue to keep them in prayer uh, and also those who, who, who have such influence on the culture that are always in those high pressure positions that in the end, they would always choose you. And so we pray for our teachers. We pray for our police officers, our soldiers. We pray that there are, we know there are good people who work in government, Lord, and we pray for them who serve the Lord. And, uh, we also pray for our athletes. We have a lot of athletes who are believers, but, but, you know, they need the courage to stand and make a difference, uh, for the faith. And so we pray that they would have courage. Uh, also a new prayer request came in for a gentleman named John Strickland. John Strickland has been part of Burbank Faith Virtual for a number of years. He was part of Burbank Faith for a number of years until he retired out of North Carolina. We refer reference John as our kinsman redeemer. He's been a blessing to my family personally and to Burbank Faith, even from North Carolina. And right now he's suffering some, some heavy kidney failure and he's in a real critical point. Uh, and if you can keep John Strickland in prayer, we would be grateful. Uh, a gentleman named Frank Griffin. We're going to ask for prayer for him. It's an unspoken. Shay Stewart, our director at Granite Ridge. We're praying for his grandfather whose health is not good. Um, Hari Trotman, his wife, Julie, Juliet, is facing surgery at this at the end of this month on her neck. We're asking for prayer for that. Uh, um, the Garmans, Greg and Leslie Garman, are retiring from ministry. They were our district superintendents, and we're asking prayer for them as they transition. Continue to pray for Jan, our 87-year-old Marine. We'll get you an update on her. Update on Victor Storms. Uh, the eye situations have corrected themselves, but continue to pray for him because he is battling diabetes. Piper Morris and her son Grayson. Uh, uh, Grayson suffers from crab leukodystrophy. In fact, there's a there's an interview of them done by NBC and other families that are suffering this disease. It's all over the internet. You might want to check that out. We pray for Megan, uh, Megan Meeks. Uh, with uh, she has cysts on her liver and kidneys. Continue to pray for her. Connected with Jimmy and, and and Maldonado about himself and Ronnie, his brother. Jimmy's doing fine. His brother Ronnie is in the hospital right now with uh, with a, a wound on his foot, and they have to do some tests on it because I think there's infection. Let's be in prayer uh, for Ronnie. 
as we go forward. Yeah, and he is diabetic, so that's what it is. I just got that note from Jimmy that uh, he is diabetic. So be in prayer for Ronnie Maldonado. Continue to pray in the great Northwest for Darlene Carroll. She heals from her knee. Uh, her friend Kathy Duncan, who has not been doing well, and Ralph, their mutual friend with COPD. Uh, <clears throat> I got an update on John Lynch and his wife Barbara. John is the one that's needing a liver transplant. The notification is, is that he would not do well with the surgery. And so right now they're kind of in this limbo phase where maybe they're just making him comfortable. This has to be incredibly hard on him and Barbara and the rest of their family. Be in prayer for the Lynch family. Also, be in prayer for our people who are battling cancer. Uh, Enrique Romo, Tim Burns, Bill Trollinger, Rachel Gilbert. Oh, actually, I want to move Rachel Gilbert to the victory list because uh, Rachel finished all of her radiation treatment. And right now she is cancer free. Colby Van Dyke and Emmanuel. So continue to keep them in prayer. Also pray for Vision Paradise. Um, <clears throat> and Pastor Walter, Pastor Francis, Edgar and the gang there. They got a big summer plan. So let's pray for them. And as well as Burbank Faith and all of our ministries and a future Armenian ministry. We want to keep praying and we know that door is going to open soon. Uh, and of course, uh, all the projects we have around the church. Thank you for your faithfulness. We do meet our obligations. Thank you for those that have blessed us financially. Uh, and uh, and when you, as you bless us, we do, we could really use it. But how we want it done is we want to make sure that if you have a home church that you attend, you know, they need your support. Uh, and and uh, But we appreciate it. If you're not attending a home church and we can be that for you, awesome sauce. All right. Uh, and be in prayer again for our Granite Ridge staff as summer is really kicking into high gear. So let's pray and I'll get you out of here. I exceeded the 15 minute mark. Uh oh. And John Halliday. Thank you, John. John, you're so encouraging to me. I hope you had a great Father's Day yesterday. Uh, let's pray. Uh, Lord, we do ask for our young people today. As we always do, Lord, uh, we ask in the hope of knowing that your spirit is stronger than the power of this world. Your, your spirit is stronger than the influences that come upon them through through various means and evil intentions, Lord, you're more powerful than that. You're bigger than the internet. You're bigger than any um, any uh, person withstanding that, that speaks a negative message. So, Lord, we pray that you would move and, and bless our young people. Give them hope and optimism for tomorrow. And let us not as the church take it away from them. And let us give them the skills uh, to remember who is imperishable, and that is you. And that they would have those skills and that hope to face a, a hostile world. Uh, and even, even within the church sometimes, they would know their scripture and know that they are redeemed by what is imperishable. Uh, Lord, we pray for those in those hot spots that, that have to, that are always on the line with their faith, Lord. We pray for courage and statements they can make by being uh, faithful to you publicly when it's called upon them. Pray for our teachers, our soldiers, our police officers, those who work in government, and yes, even our athletes, who have such great influence, Lord, we pray for them. We pray for Rhonda Miranda Hickman and the service for Jim this coming Monday, Lord. We pray your blessing upon that service, Lord. We pray for John Strickland in North Carolina, Lord. We ask for him. We pray for Frank Griffin and his unspoken request, Lord. We ask for Shay Stewart, who's in Las Vegas right now with his grandfather, and we pray for him. We pray for uh, Hari and Juliet Trotman as Juliet is facing uh, surgery at the end of this month, Lord. We pray for Greg and Leslie Garman as they are going into retirement. We pray for Jan, our 87-year-old Marine, Lord. We pray for Victor Storms and the diabetes. We pray for Piper and Grayson up in Idaho. We pray for Megan and we pray for Jimmy and Ronnie Maldonado and especially uh, Ronnie's uh, uh, situation with his foot as he battles diabetes. We continue to pray for Darlene and the Great Northwest as well as Kathy Duncan and Ralph. We pray for the Lynch household and all they're going through now. And those battling cancer, Lord, we pray for Enrique, Tim, Bill, Colby, and Emmanuel. Lord, we ask your blessings upon them and encouragement for them these days. We pray for Vision Paradise. We pray for Burbank Faith. We pray the door will open soon for an Armenian ministry. And Lord, we ask for all the ministries at Burbank Faith, as well as Granite Ridge and what we have going on with camp this summer. Lord, thank you again for loving us. Bless us today. Give us a great day, a victory day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you so much for clicking on. Uh, I know you're out there. <coughs> Leave comments as Kelly and John have done. Uh, it helps us stay in the algorithm. If you get the reaction button, if you could hit that little share button that you see, just hit share. Um, all these things help keep us in the algorithm. 
And uh, it's not that Facebook's being evil. I'm not saying that. It's just just the way the world works. You gotta you gotta get the clicks and you gotta do things so you get the exposure and people see you. Okay, this will be posted later on Burbank Faith Virtual, Instagram, Twitter, uh, and uh, and all fine retail outlets. Okay, God bless, guys. Thank you so much, John, Kelly, and whoever else is out there, and those that are gonna watch us later. God bless. Take care.